Hello my loves and welcome back to the studio or welcome if this is your first time in the new space for this latest venture into self-imposed creative projects that we set ourselves to just expand on our horizons, try different things concept wise or style wise, just test ourselves creatively uh, or even just build on our portfolios or uh, I don't know, get ourselves ready for real client work. Um, this commission time is sponsored by Skillshare, more on that later, but last time around we worked on design some notebook covers which I actually ended up making mine into real notebooks there are a few left in the shop but uh, when they're done they're done so if you want one get one now and I also have some of your really cool designs to show uh, later on in the video but for now I needed something that I could do in a short amount of time something I could fit in uh, around everything else I've got going on at the moment and I thought bookmarks. I've wanted to make bookmarks for a while and I also think they'd make a great day project hopefully um, that will just really demonstrate what you can do from going from concept to finished piece in a short amount of time. So as always let us start with a brief. Right, it says here that the average bookmark size is about two by six inches, which seems a bit wide to me. I don't know. Um, I'm just going to grab my current bookmarks just so I can compare. Okay, so I'm currently reading as my main book an ebook, but usually my main bookmark is this one, and I promise I will stop mentioning September Wildflowers in these videos, but this just happens to be my main bookmark, and as always I will have Ruth linked below, I think that's just a standard thing for all of these videos now. It does look like this one is uh, six by two inches. So yeah, I guess that is the average size. Also to note on this one is like the addition of this tassel and these like gold highlights as well. It might be an interesting thing to look into, maybe adding some kind of embellishment as well. Also I use, try not to lose my place, just this like business card, note card thing that came in my Kim Jong-gi book that Ozzy got me ages ago, years ago. That's about two inches wide as well, might be worth thinking about a shorter bookmark. And then otherwise, I might use something like um, a boarding pass. I quite like when I get a book on holiday using the boarding pass and then keeping that going throughout the next few books that I read just to bring myself back to that holiday. But at the moment, I'm out of boarding passes. I haven't done any traveling in a long time. So um, I've been using this like used crossword puzzle as a stand-in. Right, so that brings us back to the brief. Size-wise, I think we'll stick with the 2x6 inch just to keep it simple. And then um, to make things a bit more difficult for ourselves, how about having a theme this time around? Um, so let's think something book-related, like stories, quotes, mythical creatures, fairy tales, famous authors. Let's stick with fairy tales. I think that's a good broad one. I think you can use that in different ways. You could have like a quote from your favourite fairy tale, you could have characters, you could have like settings. Yeah, I think that's a good one. We will stick with that. So two by six, fairy tale themed. Style wise, I'd like them all to go together. Speaking of all, how many? Let's say three to four designs. Style wise, they all go together somewhat. Like they all have a consistent style. They look like a set. And Going back to the first bookmark that I looked at, I would like some kind of extra embellishment. It could be metallic, it could be a tassel, it could be like scalloped edges or just any kind of like different shaped edge to it. Just anything else really that you might be able to think of to make it stand out in some way, make it different to just a standard rectangle. All right, that'll do. Now let's start looking at some inspo and start doing some planning. The first place to start is to look at some famous fairy tales and think about my own personal faves. I'm also going to look at bookmarks in general to see if that sparks any ideas. I think Etsy would be a great place to look at stuff like that. And then to get an idea of the style, I might look at different book covers as design-wise, I think the audience is obviously going to be quite similar. I like how these all go together. I might try something like that, just how they all fit together. And then these are some of the book covers that I like. Um, they all tend to have like a dark background and a central focus to them. 
Right, so here's what I've got. I liked the thought of painting a beanstalk, that one just visually stood out to me straight away. And then second, I thought of the golden goose. I It's not like one of my favorite fairy tales, but um, I thought visually it might look quite cool. And then thinking about how those book covers fit together earlier, I started to think of how these bookmarks could fit together. So I went on to here, started looking at maybe weaving one from the other, either like in a zigzag or just as one long thing. And that's how I ended up thinking of things that might fit well with that. So I got to the uh, Pied Piper, the pipe from the Pied Piper, and um, maybe like Rapunzel's hair. And then the more I thought about it, I really wasn't sure about fitting those together. Um, we'll see how it goes. I've been trying different layouts, but generally I'm just gonna see how it goes once I get started. Not gonna do much planning because A, I never really do, let's be honest, but B, I really do wanna make this a one day thing. So wish me luck. Now, while I map out my sketches, let's talk a sec about today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is the whole reason that this particular project came about and is the thing that has finally got me back into the studio after the short hiatus that I took while moving house. I've gradually this year been really honing in on my art style, but I do find that whenever I take a break, even a short one, my confidence in my voice can falter a bit and that little niggling doubt can grow and grow the longer that I leave it. Now, Skillshare has always been a really surefire way for me to not only stretch my creative muscles and warm up, so to speak, but it's also a great guide for me in building new muscles. But muscle analogy aside, since it isn't a gym, Skillshare is actually an online learning platform for creatives that's just brimming with experienced and passionate teachers that are sharing their expertise on things like illustration, photography, business, and productivity. I'd actually definitely recommend looking into the productivity space on there if you haven't. Classes are ad-free and can usually be taken in about an hour or in shorter daily chunks to fit into your schedule. What got me pumped to get back into creating after my recent break was this class by illustrator and podcaster Andy J Pizza. He's got such a dynamic personality, so captivating, and he's taught this class, find your style, five exercises to unlock your creative identity. The great thing about these exercises is that you finish off with something to reference if or when you inevitably need a refresher on your style and your tastes and your direction. I loved it, I think you will too. If you are interested, or you want to check out any of the other classes on Skillshare, annual membership works out around $10 a month. And for a limited time, you can use my link in the description to get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. So thanks as always to Skillshare for sponsoring the video. Now back to these bookmarks. I had a really good time with these. It was one of these days where my work was just flowing. You'll notice that I scrapped the Pied Piper idea. To be completely honest, I was struggling to make it not look <laughs> phallic and I just didn't have time to keep trying. Although it looked back at my original little thumbnail, I think a flared end to the pipe might have been a better way to go. I think I just got caught up in wanting it to be an accurate depiction of the instrument that the story was referring to, but everything else went really smoothly and I especially love the beanstalk. I've tried to forget about you makes me restless Waiting for love, waiting for love I don't know what else I can do, it's hopeless too about the way we could sit and talk all night and we just let the good times pass and got caught up in our fights i say i don't mind but that's a lie I thought we'd work it out i've tried to let you go memories they tend to stay doesn't matter anyway cause it won't be Try to forget about you makes me right. 
Right, and before we go, let's have a look at some of your work from last time, some of the notebook designs. I was so blown away this time by the work, like this beautiful watercolour leaf pattern by Marie. I love the colours here and I would definitely have this as a notebook. Oh, or this really cool repeated mushroom design that looks great as an actual notebook. Love this one. I am dying for this one. Really cool autumnal feel um, by Andy absolutely adore this one. What about this really intricately detailed hand design by Elle? Beautiful bright peaches, another one that I would definitely have as a notebook. I feel like I could look at this stuff forever. Oh, what about this one? This is so cool. And we'll just finish on this tiger design by Gabby. Absolutely gorgeous, stunning. Thank you guys so much for sending in your work. It just seems to get better and better every single time. So if you end up having a bookmark design, a fairy tale bookmark that you want to show me for next time, um, just tag it on Instagram with the hashtag mini mission and I would love to try and feature it in the next video. But for now, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you soon for the next one. Bye. Holding on to you.